Line thin. I started my career when I was six. Uh, how could it happen? I was uh, in my father's uh, workshop where he was working when I was about six years old because sometimes in Finland it was a bit complicated that time to get the nanny. One day I decided to go this racetrack which is just uh, 500 meters from uh, my father's work and I was there just looking, hey this looks nice, a lot of noise and a lot of action and, and I went to my back to the father's work and I told my dad, look great and my father was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me ite rakennettiin rungot miekan ihan tähän Vormaa Nordikkiin asti. Et autotallissa tehtiin ja, ja tota, hän teki kokos muuta ja mä herkistin laakerit ja Mika oli mukana kaikessa ja hänen siskossa oli mukana ja kaikki tarvittiin. Noin 11-12 vuotta kuljettiin niin kuin aika aktiivisestikin. Et sanotaan, että 11 vuotta oltiin ihan aktiivisesti, että sitten se 12 vuosi oli semmoinen, että kuljettiin enää vähän niin kuin henkisenä tukena. Ja sitten sen jälkeen mikä lähti Englantiin ja yksin ja sillä tiellä on. I think one of my ambitions was always was that when I retired from Formula One myself, was to uh, try to help young drivers uh, in their career. It's, a, it's very difficult to become a top uh, professional sportsman in, in all kinds of sports. And I thought that maybe I could be helpful in that area. And uh, if I had a choice, then uh, naturally I would prefer at that time a Finnish driver, I never thought that it would become a, a, a driver management organization that would manage uh, several drivers like I do now. I mean, it all started with JJ. I chose JJ because I, be I believe he's fast. Unfortunately, this year JJ had uh, something happen, you know, dramatic for him. He had a big accident uh, in Silverstone in, uh, in the winter test. Before the winter test, he was, was uh, terrific. And I know him, he was good because I have uh, 50 days already, with this means of uh, experience. Good, uh, good looking, good image for Benetton, and uh, fast. I did a lot of work in the end of last year, in the end of 93 to get the seat in Benetton and I was really, first time I had to really work hard in the tests to prove that I'm quick enough to get the seat and I was driving against the other drivers and whoever was the quickest he got the seat and I was by far the quickest driver and I got the seat but then you know when we signed I got the accident you know after you know it was the first test after signing and then the whole trouble started. It's uh, part of my job is to look at young drivers maturing in the lower formula to see how competitive they are in, uh, in, in their first Formula One years and it was clear from uh, his performances at Lotus that he had uh, the talent to win. Uh, unfortunately for him, um, this year has been uh, somewhat frustrating as we've worked with Peugeot to develop a new engine but uh, this is just part of Formula One it's not always the case that you find yourself with uh, the best car and engine and um, he's done in the circumstances an extremely good job from McLaren. Yeah, I feel very, I'm very, very confident. And the team push, they give everything best what they can for me. And uh, you have to remember, this is basically my first fully year at McLaren. First fully racing year for McLaren. It will take at least two years when the car is built for you. Built for your driving style. It takes at least two years. And then, it should have a peak when everything is for you.
what we want from him is a is a picture and an exa uh, and his feelings about the car because nowadays we are able once we know where to look and where he identifies problems with the car we use our data systems to close in on the problem and understand it more fully um, the computers basically changed the whole game now the drivers are spending all the hours were watching computer data recordings analyzing them and analyzing the performance of the car uh, in the early days uh, the an analyzing happened through the bum of the driver and uh, now all that is backed up with enormous data logging which makes it very very complicated engineers are more more educated, more talented, better than they used to be. team tries to do their best, mechanics try to do their best, engineers try to do their best, and you know one day is only only solution and the result will be the winning the race. As is the case with all drivers that uh, participate in the team, he's a friend, he's, uh, he's not particularly complex, so there's no hard points in his, in his character and therefore our relationship is, is very comfortable. After the accident, the accident was very bad, you know, I don't think so depressed, no, how bad was the accident of JJ because of the major surgery. After the accident, JJ started working very hard to recover himself. Unfortunately, arrive, uh, arrive again in the, in the business in uh, Imola. And Again, I don't know, bad accident. And uh, after that, was, uh, Imola was the terrific, incredible uh, weekend. And everybody know about Senna, about uh, Rosenberg, about everything like that. I believe, like every other one driver, like everybody in the, in the business, had uh, quite a big shock inside, like everybody. Arrive uh, in Monte Carlo, again, was the accident for Virginia. And I believe JJ was too much for him, all this stuff happened. I was working very hard to get back as soon as possible. Maybe I made a mistake, you know, to come back a little bit too early. I still had a problem with the neck and, you know, it wasn't very good to drive with the neck in the beginning and I was really pushing it over the limits. And uh, it got sort of sore and painful again. And uh, I really, I needed a little rest, but I don't really need half a year rest, you know. So it's just, of course, I'm very disappointed about the team and uh, about the situation, but <clears throat> this is Formula One. It's very, very highly rated sport, and you know, there's a lot of money involved. And you know, like in this situation, I believe that there's a lot of sort of money involved as well to this thing to keep me out and uh, have another trouble in the team at the moment. No, it's never enough you are a talented, a good racing driver. Because there's such a many things influences your, your career. It's a communication with the people, it's a promotion work, what you do. It's a fit your fitness strength, it's your mental strength. It's your driving style, it's your style to work with the people. And all this includes to be a one good professional racing driver. If some of these areas lacking, it always will be somebody who is better. Because if you don't do your work 100%, which means the result goes down, and end of the day you will end up to sit in a grandstand. He's different. I mean, all people are different. But he's different because he's Scandinavian, and that's they have a, a softer way to living than uh, some of the more 
passionate South American drivers, obviously I hear too. But I don't think that's a bad thing. It doesn't mean that there's a lack of dedication or commitment. It just means that they have a more philosophical approach to life. And I, I actually quite enjoy that. McLaren is uh, better organized than the rest of the world, but it's also bigger. It's more complicated. It's very well financed. Uh, technically, of course, very good. But uh, I think the main thing is that with that organization, McLaren will always come through. They've had some difficult periods now. and. Uh, but still one knows that uh, McLaren is a winning team and will be winning again. My life is Formula One, it's motor racing. It's not only what I'm doing here during the weekends, but when I go back home, my life becomes more professional uh, uh, to be a better racing driver. And uh, it includes its driving and, and its living and training and its promotions. All these areas include what's been happening this year and, and the improvement been happening in a lot of many areas this year. And I have a something very special situation, I have a very good organization again behind this, which is Keke. I have a very good organization back in Monaco, pushing me uh, and, and Keke is my advisor, teaching me and telling me mistakes what I do. Once a year he maybe says, one thing, what I do right, but most of the time he says, what I do That's wrong. That's right, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make uh, the environment around him um, suitable for the best possible performance that he can deliver in Formula One, but then on the other hand, you have to be also aware that you have a young man growing up who has to learn uh, from life too, and you can't protect him from all, all his own mistakes. On the contrary, you should let him make his mistakes and learn from them. And it's, a very, it's sometimes very difficult to find that balance. I mean, Formula One is, I mean, it's, it's always been a pressure very high because the sponsors, sponsors and, and the media, the, the fans and the teams and a lot of money and, and these, all this creates a lot of pressure. And, and but you have to learn to handle it. I mean, if you, if you can't handle the pressure, it's no point to be here. JJ was just, just a victim of circumstances, much more than anything else. Everything was against him, and uh, uh, it just made the season awfully difficult. And, and at the end of the day, one could say, uh, yes, he failed. I still don't believe that he's any worse as a driver, or any better than he's, he was before. I, I believe he's absolutely the same driver as he was before. But in Formula One, you're as good as your last race. You know, to, to overcome a big accident is not easy, so it seems that he was not able to overcome it quick enough, so therefore Benetton didn't give him a car again. Well, I feel very uh, sad for JJ because I was at Silverstone the day he had his accident, and it was a very big accident. And any injury like uh, JJ suffered, certainly you can heal, the bones heal quickly, and he made a very quick recovery. But the year, once he got back into the Benetton 14, it didn't seem to come into place, the gears didn't uh, match up. And to some extent, I think Benetton Ford is very much a one-driver team because Michael Schumacher has been with the team a long time. He was winning all the races. And not consciously was there any difference made, but certainly because of the, the time it does take to recover from a major accident, and with the success that Schumacher was happening, it seemed that a, a gap was opening up between the number one and number two car in the Benetton Ford team. But I think that you know, for JJ, I spoke to him for a long time one day at Silverstone and I've been in similar situations and I can understand and maybe relate to what he is feeling. The way Formula One is now, if you don't perform, you will be out of the team and then they will get someone in new again to try. So it's very, very difficult, but very, very tough. Really, in Formula One, nobody has time to wait for anybody. 
that's the problem here. Though. They're all either you perform right away or nobody's interested. You see? Well, they can't afford to to wait somebody because it's one of the top teams and they have a lot of sort of things, you know, which has to go right. You know, it's they are fighting for the constructors' championship and for the drivers' championship, and you know, if one of the drivers is out, they have to get somebody else in to sort of because you need two cars to to be able to win the Constructors' Championship. And that's very important, not only for Benetton, it's also very, very important for Ford. Yeah, of course, for, for Benetton, it's a difficult situation. Michael's leading World Championship, and, uh, and JJ's out of the seat. Uh, for them, Constructors' Championship is probably even more important than Drivers' Championship, uh, because all the financial uh, rewards are divided according to the Constructors' Championship. don't get the results then you have the same problem of people thinking well he's not he's not doing any good so next year we won't have him again so the most important thing is he's trying to get I think getting all the possible points or podium finishes or race wins you know and you've got to get as many as those as you can I think in a way that's a pressure because that that is the thing that really make, makes the decision for the team managers you know it's very easy to drop the ball some drivers can pick it up again mentally. JJ had a big accident which was very sad for him at a very critical time. And he didn't pick the ball back up again. Do you understand what I mean? Been lucky also and I've been trying to be careful. I'm sure one day it will happen with some kind of big accident. There's no question about it. Let's hope it won't happen. And I try to avoid that every second. But never know. And you have to be in your life, you have to be prepared. I don't think now that anymore they don't affect my speed, but emotionally it was very difficult for me, for everybody of course. I still the emotions sometimes come up very strong when we talk about Ayrton and Ratzenberger. Ayrton more because I knew him more than Ratzenberger. But that, that is also always strong and, and very negative thing. Mikä on ajanut niin kauan, että sitä on ensinnäkin tuudittautunut siihen, että eihän sellaista voi tapahtua. Ja se pelko on pakko oppia hallitsemaan. Eli jos 16 kertaa vuodesta, eikä se riitä se 16 kertaa, kun hän kilpailee, vaan hän testaa kolmena päivänä viikossa, joka on yhtä vaarallista. Et jos koko ajan vain ihminen pelkää, niin silloin hän menettää terveytensä. Ei jaksa sitä. Se on täytyy oppia elämään sen pelon kanssa. Oppia asennoitumaan siihen pelkoon niin, että se pystyt tekemään työtä ja olemaan normaalisti. Myself, I accept that that is a possibility that it could happen. It's, it, it could happen, it has happened this year. But it is a risk I am willing to take because it's a sport that I love very, very much. And I hope it doesn't happen, but it, it could do. It could happen tomorrow. Maybe you're the last person who could interview me. And it's very, very possible, but I don't think about it. I think you have to be extremely committed, committed to your work. That's a one of the ma major things. Commit your life, 
for your sport and the racing and uh, commit your life for the team and winning basically. It means a lot of things, it means a lot of uh, sacrifices from your, from your life. You need to give everything to the task in hand. So uh, he's doing that and I think in, in the end it will pay off. Well, I think in terms of driving, he is 100% committed. Uh, his whole life is geared to being a Grand Prix driver. And that is part of the requirement today to be a Marlboro McLaren driver. It's work, work, work. It is not about turning up at a Grand Prix and then spending the rest of your time playing with jet skis, playing golf, lying on the beach, you know, going out with girls. It is about a commitment because Marlboro McLaren team make a very big commitment to the job of being the most successful team, or jointly the most successful team, in the history of Formula One racing. So as regards Mika, he's, he's got, a, I think, a good, a good perception of, of what, it, what it takes to be a Grand Prix driver, and he certainly puts personal relationships with females as a second priority, which I think is right, because at the moment he hasn't succeeded. He hasn't won races, he hasn't won a world championship, and until he has, he needs every bit of concentration and commitment that he can find within himself. And uh, as, as you get into a relationship with uh, you know, another member of, the, uh, member of the opposite sex, you know, it, it does take part of your mind, part of your time, and um, when you're trying to succeed, you know, it, it's you need to give everything to the task in hand. So uh, he's doing that and I think in, in the end it will pay off. Pitää muistaa, että kun sä oot tilanteessa, että sä voitat kilpailuja, niin sulla tulee paljon enemmän avautuu alueita ja elämässä, että sä pystyt keskittymään paremmin ja sulla on niinku helpottuneempi olo siitä, että sä tiedät, että sun auto on hyvä, kone on hyvä ja, ja, ja sä voitat kisoja. Jos näin ei olisi tilanne, niin kuin mulla ei ole. Eli auto ei, tällä, auto ei tällä hetkellä toimi just niin kuin se pitäisi. Moottori on kehitysvaiheessa tällä hetkellä. Eli silloin sulle ei jää aikaa millekään muulle kuin ainoastaan näille alueille, mitä sun pitää kehittää. Et joku päivä sitten, kun voittoa rupeaa tulemaan ja saavutuksia, niin sitten sit ehkä voi, voi niin antaa tilaa enemmän muille asioille, mutta tällä hetkellä ei ole siihen maastuvia. The life of a Formula One driver is very, very hard because it's mainly spent alone, traveling, testing, promoting, racing, and uh, through all this traveling, which is very tiring and wearing, uh, it's very difficult to find time for enough for the physical training, for, for rest, which gives you mental strength, and uh, it all takes time before you learn to cope with these pressures. I and mean, it's no difficult to, no difference to, a, to an international tennis player who commutes from one tournament to another. Uh, sometimes it's a very lonely life, very hard life, and uh, your motivation has to be very, very hard to keep uh, a peak performance uh, throughout the year. When I won my first race, and, and one day, hopefully, if everything goes by plan, when you world championship, Even then you would give me the same answer, I'm a, a, a question. I maybe would say, I don't know. I, I think if the situation is when you are uh, not motivated anymore, and uh, you don't want to travel anymore, you want a family, you want a girlfriend, and like that, then I think it's time to stop. If other things become more important at the moment, I don't have anything else important than being here and, and uh, win the races. is a top driver. Yeah. A top driver is one who um, can think and chew gum at the same time basically. No, a top driver is one who can drive very very quickly 
using a, a minimum amount of his mental powers. By being able to do that, he doesn't tire as easily. Um, it means that he has more mental capacity available to deal with the tactical aspects of, of Grand Prix racing. There are some drivers who are just naturally brilliant race drivers. They may not be a college professor, but if you take someone like Ayrton Senna, in my mind, who is the greatest driver, uh, contemporary driver I've seen, and could arguably the best we've ever seen, he was an exceptionally intelligent man, as well as being a brilliant driver. These days in Formula One, uh, you need to you need to, to understand a little bit more the car, and to, you need to set up the car the, the best way to adapt the car to your style and uh, you need experience, so you build your experience by uh, doing a lot of uh, work with the team, especially in private testing. Speed, enough speed, which has to be really the, the, the main matter, and enough brain. If you put the two things together, then you'll be successful. Well, I think nowadays, obviously, I think you have to very, have a very quick brain, uh, which is maybe a problem for Mika. Um, but uh, no, he's he's got a very quick brain, which you ha you need to have for driving because you need to you need to make things much slower than what than what is happening. And I think that's one reason why he can drive very fast because he has that that ability to make things much slower. The best driver is the one who, who learn can learn uh, uh, all the time. You know, every day he's working and learn, and he, he get the experience for him and. Uh, that is the best driver because there's a lot of good drivers being able to set up a good time with a Formula One or another car. But uh, being competitive, being good every day uh, on different races and uh, different seasons and uh, any kind of circumstances, you don't have a lot. <clears throat> Obviously natural speed in the car, that's, that's the basics. And you have to be very strong in the head, you have to be mentally very good and very strong to take the pressure yeah the, 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 it's not just the driver and how good the driver is the, the, it's the most important thing is that once you are a good driver you get a good car and a good engine and sometimes you get a good car and not a good engine you need the complete package and maybe that only happens once or twice in your career well, you never know maybe I start to be a farmer or maybe I still be a race driver we will see we're working on it at the moment and hopefully we find out something good you know, for next year. But it's, it's not so easy at the moment because all the teams are struggling with the money and um, there's a lot of drivers with the money you know, to, to come in and you know, from Finland it's very difficult to find the money at the moment. And, uh, like I have done over 60 Grand Prix and you know, I have been here for five years. You know, it's, it's a little bit silly to, to start to carry money and to buy the, the seat in Formula One. I think that, but that's the way it goes nowadays. is that you know Formula One is getting more and more expensive I mean it's been very expensive in, in the past and it's just all the materials they are using and everything you know that you know you always try to make better and better car better equipment and better parts and you know they always cost more money so you need more money and it's not cheap to buy the Formula One cars around the world you know there's a lot of things you know you need to do and, This is a sport for money. Um, because although there's a lot of money involved in the business, uh, it's not equally spread across the teams. And uh, it's a little bit like the old saying of the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. The strong teams that are well funded 
have the have a better opportunity to 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 continue to be well funded or increase the strength of their position. Um, the teams that are underfunded have a much more difficult job to to take the step up from the bottom step to the second step to the top step. Ich glaube, man kann das eine nicht vom vom anderen trennen. Das ist, was wir hier machen, ist Sport, ein sehr sehr teurer Sport, und es braucht sehr viel Geld, um gutes Material zu haben. Es braucht sehr viel Geld, um gute Fahrer zu haben. Und man kann diese sehr hohen Mittel nur rechtfertigen, wenn man Resultate liefert. Und so schließt sich dieser Kreis immer und der ist schon sehr hart und stellt hohe Anforderungen. Every year, the journey gets tougher. The sponsors expect more, quite rightly. Uh, we have to fight harder to do more for them. Uh, we are expected to achieve more. Um, when a company's involved, they want to win. That's the whole idea of being involved. So the pressures on us are tremendous, and of course the drivers as well. Hi, I'm Mika Hackinen. I have two special licenses. A special license for Formula One. And a special license for Carlyle. It's called the Passport Card. When we, when we decided to get involved again in Formula One, we wanted to be involved with a team which we thought would be successful. We wanted to go with a team who we thought shared common values with Shell. And we believe that uh, some of the values of Shell, i.e. like leadership and success and innovation, are qualities that, are that we find in McLaren. And uh, everything that we have discovered with McLaren over the 10 years has proven to us that they are an absolutely first-class professional uh, organization to be with. Because McLaren, to me, epitomizes a company that is driven by management. It strives for excellence. It has some of the best management in the business. It has won consistently, and even if this year it hasn't, we know it will win again. I think you have to have companies which really need worldwide exposure, especially on TV, because there's no other, uh, no other uh, sport that will give the exposure that motorsport does every single year throughout the world. People will not invest the size money that's being invested. We would not invest our type of money if it wasn't for the fact that that media exposure has created an interest. In the end, we are not interested in media exposure, we are interested in our customers thinking that it is important. we're involved in Formula One is because it enables us to uh, improve our fuel and lubricants technology, which means that we can improve the products that we sell to the man in the street. My passport. We hopefully at McLaren we, we always encourage the image of McLaren as part of the whole team. Very much a team operation. The driver is part of that team, an important part, but never less a uh, part of the team. And so we would encourage Mika to do things in a certain way, in a McLaren type of way, to promote uh, the image of McLaren to the best possible way of the, of, of the world. I think he's a tremendously young, new driver who will go a very long way. He's a very exciting driver, a very positive personality, and he's first class for Formula One, 
and for a commercial sponsor is absolutely ideal. He's outgoing, easygoing, friendly, communicative, speaks excellent English, and is fun. That's what we look for. He's also a bloody good driver, and that's the most important single thing. I suggested to Keke, Keke Rosberg, that maybe Mika could do with some help on the press side. There's quite a few drivers have somebody to look after their, their media activities. And uh, luckily Keke believed my argument. And that's how it started. It started at the, the end of last season. I sort of came on board. And my responsibility is to look after all media, uh, Mika's media work. You know, try and organize a timetable for him to, to do interviews and everything. Because there are so many requests that unless you have a plan, it's just too haphazard. And he'd be doing interviews every two minutes. So I group people together and do things like this. Then I also help him you know do a column after every race where he gives his version of what happened over the weekend which obviously is good publicity for him for his sponsors makes him more visible which is what this game is all about I just need your height yeah, weight I will wait to see that <laughs> no we've got it all and okay. got it all height, height size height weight and um, hop 70 76 76 <laughs> Before the race? No, I'm not. No, no, no. Joking. Mika, before the race or up to 76? No, no. no, not 76. No. What are you? 62. 68. 68. Two days. Wow. With your wallet? Yeah. <laughs> Without wallet? No. On the hobby, please. <laughs> Golf? Okay. Golf. Tennis? Running? Swimming? Go. No. Um, Best thing. No. McLaren is, is probably the team that is most image conscious in the whole pit lane, I would say. The most well organised, the most well run in terms of everything is always planned down to the last detail. And so that image tends to rub off automatically on whoever drives for that team anyway. I mean, Senna was very much that sort of guy when he drove for McLaren. Everything had to be in the right order at the right time. So just by joining McLaren, Mika is given an image in Formula One of somebody who's organized, efficient, and, you know, smartly turned out at all times, and, and so on. The ways that they would have helped Mika is that the professionalism that exists in Marlborough McLaren, it's very, very high indeed. And with Ron Dennis as the, the, the figurehead in the team, he has got clear ideas about how he wants his team to be presented and represented off and on the circuit. And Mika, is a, his image is very clean. He, uh, he doesn't get into trouble off the track. Uh, he is a very good, I say, ambassador for Marlborough and for McLaren. お過ごされた三日ハキネン選手なんですが、ただいまからですね、ちょっと気分を変えて、次は日本の食文化に触れていただこうかなと思います。三日、I'm <笑> さん、いかがですかこのエサンドライバーの手つき。あの、変な形になりましたけどね。ちょっと言うんですね。ね。僕、ご意見がテリブル。Really? この道に10年って感じですね。そしてこちらが発起年選手のそばです。ひどい感じの感想を聞いたんですけど。It's <笑>
if you look at all the Japanese magazines, all the fashion models are Europeans with blonde hair. Oh, okay, he's also popular. That's a quick answer. He's also popular because he drives for McLaren. McLaren had a long and very successful association with Honda. Uh, McLaren even had a team permanently based at Suzuka Circuit in Japan doing testing. So anything connected with McLaren is very popular in, uh, in Japan. Mika is very popular because he's young and good looking for them. He's got blonde hair. And that's it. I mean, JJ is very popular there as well. Uh, starting last year, where when Mika started to work for a top team, um, KK has, has decided to um, to appoint somebody to work very closely to Mika with Mika because uh, it's necessary because it's a lot of work to be done outside the car. I Means in terms of the press, in terms of uh, of promotions, instead of uh, in terms of collaboration uh, and coordination with the team. And um, I started that time following the wish Mika to uh, follow him at every Grand Prix and try to back him up to be there, to be stand by, to listen and to, to try to understand if everything is alright. I feel released, very happy that this season is over because it was an extremely demanding season and the commitment, what I put it this year, was in very high. And uh, I'm happy now to wake up in the morning and just to relax a little bit, not to have feelings about, okay, here we go, the testing somewhere. I can have feeling like, now I can have a egg, bacon, sausage breakfast, and I can relax in the morning. tulee <laughs> Kaudesta tulee vaikea ja, ja joka on odotettavissakin aika pitkään sen takia, että auto on uusi ja aika uuden mallinen verrattuna viime vuoteen ja kone on täysin uusi. Erittäin positiivisesti auto on lähtenyt käyntiin naisen kanssa. Ja saa semmoista itseluottamusta siitä, että kun mä oon nyt ajanut tuossa muutaman päivän ja, ja, ja kertonut autosta määrättyjä asioita ja sitten naisen hyppää puikkoihin ja, ja, ja että meidän kommentit menee yhteen ja niitä voi sitten liittää sit taas siihen dataan, mitä saadaan tietokoneista, niin, niin se on hyvä juttu ja, ja se tuo mulle semmoista itseluottamusta ja semmoista varmuutta mun työhön, että et, et insinöörit vielä enemmän luottaa, insinöörit mm -hmm. vielä enemmän luottaa muhun, muhun tuota tähän tässä, tässä testaamisessa ja kilpailussa.